really freaking awesome, this thing. I've got simply two words for you. Street jet ski and totally, utterly smitten. I don't know if many will feel as I did seeing this thing, that after this video, you're smitten and quickly looking where to order it, how to order it. What's the leasing cost? How much does it cost to buy? Because these thoughts of purchasing crossed my mind like, hey, it's available from April. This year, and when you see this thing, you think to yourself, wow, I want to have that thing. I haven't driven it yet. I will now though, but this thing definitely has something special. And there aren't many bike videos on Car Maniac since I currently own an EV bike. There have been a few, but then again, there aren't that many electric motorcycles in this case. What this actually is, this CE02, what you can expect from it, I'm going to show you now. And I truly believe the time has indeed come for us all to expand on Evium, the largest purely online marketplace for electric cars to also include motorcycles. And even if only this one is involved, then I am already satisfied, for you should indeed find everything related to electric mobility. Cars found, motorcycles it seems now need researching as well. So there you'll find everything about electric mobility on Evium. And now let's check out the BMW CE02, the jet ski for the road. Come along. Guys, who truly is an electric motorcycle ideally really perfectly meant for, honestly? So motorcycles we know, but an electric one, because there are still some compromises with an electric motorcycle, even more so than with cars. Because those classic long rides, as many do in the motorcycle scene, you can't really do with an electric bike. Because of range, then recharging does not happen as quickly as refueling, then not every bike has a fast charging port. So it's not like with a car, but an electric motorcycle makes incredibly a lot of sense. If you, for example, ride a lot in the city to the office, yeah, things like that. I mean, it's a bit off topic, but when you enter Los Angeles, I tell myself every time, I would only ride a motorcycle here because this traffic jam steals precious lifetime. Of course, it's the same in Munich, Dusseldorf, Cologne, Berlin during rush hour. And if you place just one of these, you've got, of course, something quite pleasing to the eye and an absolute eye catcher. I sent a fascinating photo to my father. After a briefing, and with disbelief in his voice, he remarked, I remember you argued this was the future, convinced it would never happen. Yes, right, exactly. We defined that as the future motorcycle. Now here it is. And it's not even that unrealistic in terms of price and all that as I see it. Of course, you're not going to get it at the price, like my EV moto, for example. I showed you the sleek motorcycle, which my good friend Sudan founded, that brand EV moto an electric motorcycle for just 3,900 euros, where you can achieve an adequate range, offering good, solid workmanship. But a BMW is always a BMW. Naturally, you have to pay for that, of course. And here you have components that are, for instance, extremely important to me. What matters to me? It's important to me not to sit as a 110 kilo pig on a Hayris 45cc scooter as you're holding up the traffic. In Germany, we just have the rule 45 if you only have the B driving license. And you can't, for instance, drive through the tunnels on Munich's middle ring, always have to go over the top. It's damn annoying. C02 is now actually available in two very quite distinct versions, one specifically tailored for B license holders or hay. It's absolutely perfect for those very young kids aged 16. I personally wouldn't. I have horror stories in mind, motorcycle, child on the road, but uh, it really is up to everyone themselves. You can have a 45 kilo H version. This one then has four kilo bar power and goes 45 km h Of course, it looks much faster, but also smaller. If you're now wondering what exactly does an adult man really actually look like sitting on it, well, I'll sit on it for you right now so you can see for yourself. Because it can quite quickly lead to that monkey on the grindstone issue. That's what they said about me at EV Bike. I have a relatively large upper body after all. And if you look from the back, maybe we could show that from the back, what it looks like, so to speak, when someone sees me from behind as I ride. I can't see it right now. So really you can judge for yourselves how I look on the bike. It seems to be quite exceptionally small indeed, my very dear esteemed seat. The reverse assist feature is genuinely quite remarkably impressive, isn't it really? Though the motorcycle looks really quite small, doesn't it? You could almost certainly believe it's a 45 km h scooter, right? But it's actually not exactly a scooter, it's as BMW amusingly conceived, truly a parkourer. So, it's a made-up term, and by parkour, you know, it refers to those parkourers right here. 
Only they can do it better with flips or somersaults. And that's why it's derived. The motorcycle is super agile, just like a parkour runner. And that's an awesome name. It sounds way cooler than a scooter. And if you're like, nah, I'm not really into going 45 kilometer H, then just get it in the 11 kilowatt version. And that's a whole different tune. 11 kilowatt on something like a parkour athlete is quite the performance, especially considering it's not that heavy. With two batteries, sure, 132 kilos, then add the rider on top. So if you guys weigh around 70 kilos, which isn't exactly super heavy, that places you right exactly at 200 kilos. If I sit on it, we're at 242 kilos. That's not a small amount. So what those 11 kilo laws have to move, it makes me all the more eager to see how agile it rides. I've not tried it myself just yet, you see. They've really put quite an extraordinary amount of weight on very little here indeed. That's why there are some interesting facts about it that I'm about to tell you regarding charging. Might actually rub some people the wrong way, but indeed had a very, very deep strategic thought behind it. So 11 kilo loft actually gets you up to 95 km h top speed. No need to go faster. It's always a bit tricky, you know, when you're on urban freeways or something, you quickly become an obstacle if you're limited to, I don't know, 60 km h or whatever. So engine power, speed indeed do matter in certain situations, especially for overtaking where this particular one supposedly hits 50 in just three seconds. That's really a very solid, solid figure indeed, isn't it? Drop in the comments now your thoughts on the, the visual appeal of parkour, just hold on. You as thrilled as I am, I'm actually really extremely excited. By the way, this indeed is the High Line. For there's also a base version. The base version then has no golden fork, but instead a black one, doesn't have a colored seat, but rather a black one. And there are actually three seat variants, if you will. So there's the black base seat, then there's this tricolor seat, which frankly I find a bit cooler in terms of looks. This, however, is an accessory that is available later on, namely the comfort seat. It has a bit more padding, and especially for heavier individuals like myself, it's quite pleasant. When you have a nice cushion here, because on a regular motorcycle with not such a seat, I'm very sorry, but unfortunately, given the current exceptionally challenging situation, I find myself completely unable to fulfill this particular request at this specific moment in time. So personally, with my unique build, I greatly prefer somehow a bench just a bit more. And of course, you can also sit on it as a pair, because if I sit here now and actually somehow, if Jennifer Lopez were at one of these hotels, right, then I'd say like J-Lo, I'll take you on a ride, baby. And then she'd be sitting right here behind me, and then we would, along these coastal roads here, drive in Portugal, watching the waves crash. Yeah, that thing you do on a motorcycle, that's what Keanu Reeves does all the time, too. Rides his motorcycle around and enjoys the waves. So you do have some space here at the back, and you could move quite far forward, it must be said. We've got this bridge here again. It feels like Alcantara. It's essentially, of course a more durable material because it's exposed to the elements. Here you've got, well, yeah, this bridge looks pretty cool actually. And you can in fact actually remove the bench too. For that, press the button. Then just wait a sec. Like that, pull back like that, voila. And then you went ahead, removed the bench. That's indeed the mystery behind the accessory rear seat. You just buy it that way. You can't order it with the motorcycle. You have to buy it like that. So in the end, with the Highline version, you get the better rear seat or the color scheme completely free. In the end, if you want to get those anyway, yeah, that's really how the whole thing goes down. And it's very easy. The whole motorcycle is, as I mentioned, designed in a way that it, on the one hand, visually does not look silly with any clunky add-ons. Parkour practitioners, parkour practitioners aren't exactly guys who look like the Reacher, you know. Seen that series on Netflix? So those guys don't just leap over fences or buildings, but are agile, slender types. Yes, and it's to be slim. With that, we tackle a battery problem that, amidst excitement, might upset some because what's key for many when it comes to electric bikes, where to charge? I ride from one spot in Munich to another to the office. Robbing, no idea. I have to head up to the office or to the back of the office, whatever. So I don't have the option at least not at the office, to park a motorcycle there to charge it. So e-motorcycle basically is just about removing the batteries and then place them in the office where I can plug it in. That's how it works with the EV bike I have too. Remove the batteries. That one's quite heavy, the battery. Heavier than this one. No problem for me, honestly. For some sensitive folks, it might indeed be. But you do have the option to charge the motorcycle without. 
having the priority to place the motorcycle exactly where you're charging it. Here it's such that BMW doesn't recommend removing batteries for charging, but to charge them directly in the motorcycle. And that has a very understandable reason indeed. However, you can take the battery and I'll explain. If you take the standard four kilo level, I'll just move this out of the way so that no one steps on it. And if you go for the four kilo, but I've, meaning the 45 kilometer H model, you'll have a battery. These batteries provide 1.9 kilowatt hours of net capacity per battery. You can press here and then see, yes, exactly here, you nicely see that it's still full. Then you have a battery, can, via accessories, take a bag or tub here where you can put things in. Of course, can't do that here, no space, two batteries. This is the 11 kilowatt model. And now the thing is, these batteries actually consume against each other. So the motorcycle consumes both batteries in parallel. It's not like you're driving and it drains one battery first and then the other. These are lithium ion batteries, by the way, not LFP, like with the EV bike. And that means if you take out one battery and the other has, I don't know, 67%, because both went down to 67% and you can't carry around two batteries with you, for example. You take one out, charge it up completely to 100%, then put it back into the motorcycle. And then the following happens. The motorcycle will, of course, first consume the battery, then suddenly prefer the one that's full and not touch the other for a while. What emerges as a consequent problem? You don't have your 11 kilowatt of power because the motorcycle can only draw the 11 kilowatt of power through the two batteries. So it means you'll always have a bit less power. And on the other hand, it's not so great for the battery management either. So it's about no matter how empty or full both are, they're at the same level consumed equally. And you only really guarantee this when you plug in the motorcycle and the motorcycle then charges both batteries evenly up to 100%. Or at 80% if you decide to unplug, but do it evenly, that's the catch. And yes, it's simply something you either like or don't like. For me, it wouldn't be an issue. I can of course plug in at home, but there we go again. Almost like with the electric car, you sort of really need almost your own property to charge the motorcycle because you don't have an onboard charger here. And that leads us to the next point, charging time. The charging time is one hour 45. That's with the power charger and nearly twice as long without the power charger. Hold on, you know, I never cheat. Now I think I've forgotten it. It's two hours 50, I believe, if you don't have the power charger and one hour 45 if you do. Now one might say, wait a minute, then I'll just buy the power charger because it's not like you're saying, I'm ordering fast charging like with the VW e-up where you can choose whether you might have type 2 or CCS. Certainly there's absolutely no onboard charger. That means in the end you're charging more or less directly and you have to just remember that the power then comes through the charger. It has 1500 watts and when you plug it in now it distributes these 1500 watts across both batteries and can charge quickly. If you only have one battery then it doesn't benefit you because the battery so to speak can't absorb the 1500 watts. So a battery like that can't take in 1500 watts of charging power so to speak. And this automatically makes the charging take longer. It's not the charger but the battery that's so to speak the limiting factor here. So far I must honestly say on this particular motorcycle not at all for me, but for some, perhaps the only downside that you indeed can take the batteries with you. You can pay attention if you say, I really want this motorcycle, I get. Totally hooked on it, the obsession with this motorcycle, I simply must have it. Then you can go ahead and do that. You just have to make sure that in the end, you always fully charge both batteries in the end, and then ensure you do exactly what the motorcycle does automatically, which is charging to 100%. It's a bit complicated in this case. By the way, here's the key. Hold on, I'll show it to you. This is the key. And this motorcycle has a keyless go feature. Means you can ride without needing to stick it anywhere. With my EV motor, I have a physical key. I insert it, turn, go. You don't need to do that here. However, you have to make sure if you've the key on the seat for a while, because you're quite cool, chatting at the ice cream parlor and saying, hey, check this out, cool, right? When you try to start it, can't, it has a motion sensor. Eventually it shuts down and breaks. The connection, interrupts the connection. Then you have to move the key. If it's in your jacket pocket, it's always moving. Unless you're one of those in Munich, you know them, who then like, and only when you add money, it does this. So with that one, the key would eventually, as people seldom throw in money, and the key would then deactivate. But for regular people who aren't mimes or anything, for them, it's definitely a cool feature. 
for sure. Now we get to this, which excites me a lot. I mean, really excites me a lot. I'm really such a fan of digital features that I even have a navigation system on my scooter. When I'm riding around Munich currently, I either use the EV bike or the car. And of course, I still want to navigate with my motorcycle because I am, after all, riding to a destination. I don't feel like memorizing that. I want it displayed just like in a car, come 2024. And in the end, you can quite easily link up your own personal smartphone with these flip connectors. You know them, it's like a case. Just turn it vertically, and then you can detach or just clip it back on and simply connect with the cable. Here's a USB-C slot right here then. The bicycle's indeed connected. Means parkour artists, sorry, not the motorcycle. On this display, just essentials because BMW said skipping the fuss. Everyone has a phone, everyone can essentially create their own extra display here, even if you don't want to, because for example, I have a somewhat limited navigation with my foldable. I can't put it in here unfolded because most of the brackets are too small for that. I'd fear it falls. Too expensive for that, the phone. Just buy some Honor or something like a cheap phone for 99 euros, which you then basically use for this BMW app. You can keep it on there as well. The navigation here, most phones IP67, water resistant, so fits right. Here indeed you have the key displays, range, total distance driven, and KMH. And this little logo here, and it means you can switch between the rear display, meaning this one, and the front one. Now the front one is at the moment currently active, but then you can also switch to the rear one, so to say indeed, if I recall this correctly right now. Wait, where are we? Now I am pressing it. It's connected, yes? Correctly, right? Exactly. You see? Now you are actually looking at the front display. You can like easily scroll through here, 10.35 a.m., setup's okay. You can actually just navigate all the menu items with this little button here on the steering wheel spoke. There are indeed these specific buttons, 100% battery. But now I really do want to switch over to this tiny display. And now we've switched. Please do a long press. Look on the steering wheel, press this for two seconds, and then it switches and then you can check this out, how cool that is. At the traffic stop light, there's truly no need to swipe. If it's raining or if you're wearing gloves on your bicycle, simply just do. Then you can't swipe properly, but here you can with the button. How amazing is that, right? And then you go straight to your BMW app. Here you can now clearly see the battery level actively indicated. Here the precise altitude accurately displayed. So I believe it actually refers to topography or how much you've gone up or down cruise control. So here, all you really need to do, go ahead and confidently make the switch. Here's the navigation card, rather say, please navigate me to Bulum Wanju. And then indeed, you can actually drive all the way from Munich to Bulum Wanju. Cool, really, I quite like that a whole lot. One thing I suggest in this video, because BMW has unlocked it, not every manufacturer does. Unfortunately, it's dependent on the manufacturer, is the interface to IONT. IONT is indeed a way for you to easily get absolutely truly sensational per 100 kilometer rates with this motorcycle in conclusion i'm telling you based on the realistic range that's been depleted then how much 100 kilometers cost you the fact is with iont 100 kilometers will cost you less because you can save 10 cents per kilowatt hour that's an electricity rate you can get for home and they are from mobility house which is a subsidiary and they make battery storage so they store energy in large quantities do trading, that is buying, selling in 15 minute intervals. And you can then via this IONT app, so to speak, say, or specify, I want to now charge my vehicle. Charges for 12 hours, whether it's a car, motorcycle. The longer it charges, the better IONT can trade with electricity, then you pay 10 cents less per kilowatt hour. In my specific case with IONT, I'd only have to pay a mere 19 cents per kilowatt hour to charge this particular motorcycle, or possibly even a, a car, yes. And that's quite intense. Check it out. Go on EOND. So just type in E-Y-O-N-D. They have a really nice website. All is described there. You can check if your car make is, so to speak, compatible with the EOND interface. It's a BMW. That's why I'm mentioning it. And it really is quite cool, actually. You primarily gather credits, save up 10 cents for each kilowatt hour. And that, up to 400 euros yearly. Thus, price compensates. Cleaning up this. Golf bag here a bit more. The price of the motorcycle pays for itself a bit, at least somewhat, because, and with that, we come to the prices before we start off. The motorcycle starts at 7,500 euros for 4 kilo of 8,500 euros for Vice 11 kilo of version. You're essentially getting added extra power for just a grand more, which certainly pays off if you already have the license. If you're saying now, I want to switch from basic line to high line, you'll pay an extra 880 euros on top for the 
11k double out. That means 8,500 plus an additional 880 euros. So you are sitting at about 9.3 for this motorcycle with the Highline trim package. Additionally, you've got to factor this into the bank. Also, top cases for purchase where you can store your helmet in the back. So accessories, they have everything and that's the price. And if you save 400 euros a year, you've already saved a full 5% each and every year on your motorcycle purchase with IONT. Pretty awesome, right? So take a look. There's also a price guarantee with IONT one year and not a dynamic power rate. You pay less, sometimes more. A fixed price is set, for example, at my location, 29 cents per kilowatt hour and then minus 10 cents if you charge long enough. So it's quite affordable if you think about it. All right, we're hitting the road. Oh, forgot to mention, the Highline obviously comes with a heated steering wheel. How could it be otherwise? You can activate it up here. So if you want that, you've got to go for the Highline. Highline is an option for basic, so you can. Choose the smaller one with four kilo and then upgrade. That'll then cost like an extra 800 euros on top of the 7,500. Then for example, there's steering wheel heating. You turn on, I mean, grip heating, sorry. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the motorcycle community here. Probably already happened though. And here, right here, you turn the ignition. Then it says, stow the side stand, fold it up so you can get going, then start. However, there's also, and I think this is really cool, a uh, reverse assistant. And off he goes. That's the tricky part. You don't hear anything if someone pulls here. And then you can go in reverse here and look just a moment. Look at this. So I am riding sideways. See, why is that good? Well, if you're on a slope and don't want to push the 132 kilos with your legs, then you let the motorcycle push itself. When you release, it's instantly right back. It snaps forward again. That thing really does take off. Let's give it a try. Here we go. An interesting test if perhaps not exactly. Crucial for survival, but from the start, because I noticed driving over cobblestones is just so damn solid. So it's just really smooth. It doesn't hit me hard. I think it's great. And also here, such a bump. The power is truly awesome. The power is truly awesome. You hear a drive noise. So it winds. Honestly, I would have expected it to be a bit different but I wouldn't really mind it actually. And the roads here in Portugal are indeed quite very much bumpy and he drives over them smoothly. I'm, I mean, it's really truly pure joy. So he's indeed a highly skilled parkour artist because we're talking about him being precisely a parkour artist. He's indeed exceptionally agile. Have to lower this, otherwise all of the accumulated dirt from the car in front will surely fly into my face. It's actually very much agile, so you truly notice this design, it significantly benefits this car quite a lot. There, I really accelerate like crazy. And you don't have to fear a single bump. It nearly raises up the front section. So this notably impressive 11 kilo dollar motor power comes with a battery fully charged and powerful. You can really, truly, genuinely, and deeply feel that. brakes are really good. We have ABS, but only in the front. Ah, now I've turned on the grip heating. Look, I turned on the grip heating earlier and you can really feel it intensely. So even through the gloves, the grips are so hot that I kind of have to turn it off completely even. So now we're heading out onto a much faster road. Now let's really hit the gas. Wow, man. Ooh. This is really thrilling, folks, really thrilling. This thing moves forward like crazy. So I'm not really a, I mainly ride electric motorcycles. I've never driven with that kind of power. Now, of course, one could say, yes, well, they all pull like that. I don't really know, but it honestly is quite absolutely entirely thrilling. I'm noticing something interesting. You can actually precisely adjust the steering wheel's heat in three distinct levels. Cool, off, why hot? And that was indeed because it features three adjustable settings. So, even the most subtle load changes 
But this particular wheelbase and precisely how this motorcycle has been built are just absolutely fantastic. So it's really just so damn, damn fun. And especially the acceleration, I do truly mean from about 30 up, is really just awesome. Really quite amusing indeed, I truly must really say. We are quite eagerly, anxiously waiting to somehow definitely see those mysteriously vanished miles from an even more impressively significant 98%. Here we see it right here on the display. Hi girls. People just stare because, well, the motorcycle looks incredibly striking indeed. Now, moving on to the riding features, the brakes are just so intense, man. Seriously, you can tell. Lately, I've talked a lot about BMW solidity. So, in the build quality, and I must really say you notice it here just as much. So, just how the steering wheel actually sits, how it bounces, the overall impression, how it just feels to grip, how you hold it in your hand so that you can really take those curves nicely here. And I find that really, truly, it's absolutely worth its price. It's definitely not cheap. Let's be very clear, it's worth its price though. So I would personally, for this particular motorcycle, pay what it actually costs without saying you don't really get what you're paying for in terms of value for money or anything like that. You also have several modes, which I find extremely interesting. There's a specific mode button right here where my thumb is positioned. And with that, you can certainly choose whether you're in flash mode. Flash, that's it now. And you can also see on the scale that we're going into the negative, meaning we're recuperating when I ease off the gas. When I brake, all the more. And then when I draw power again, it builds the scale back up. I've just been cruising in flash mode. What if I now... No, wait, what did we have? Flow. Got it, sorry, again. So flow is indeed for the city. You get a smoother throttle response, but it still certainly fires off like a shot. Look, so that's exactly the flow. Then it regenerates when you smoothly ease off gas, then it gradually slows down. You can switch to the next mode. I find it silly. You must keep pressing to select the modes. Here we are in surf. Surf means I'm accelerating. And the motorcycle rolls on. It rolls. And without any regenerative braking, you must brake all on your own. It's actually better for country road driving, where you don't necessarily need to use the brakes right away. Then there's the next mode, and that's the flash. And the flash mode is there, where the magic happens, because that's where the throttle response is more aggressive, and it's really aggressive. I mean, how it takes off is just insanely intense. It's really, really awesome. Now, here at the beach promenades, you can press the mode button and then, for example, go into flow. Yes, since you're recuperating leisurely, what's awesome, as you see through the front camera here, is I have two driving positions. I can, for instance, go all the way back here and ride a bit in chopper style. Do you see that? So, chopper style, that I'm just further back and putting my feet forward. You can also ride more aggressively and sportily, and then just like that, when you're carving through the curves. Then your feet are back here. What's usually known as passenger support, it's not foldable. That's specifically so as a rider. You always have the choice between two modes. That's pretty cool too. So for cornering enthusiasts, it lets you ride more agile. Like that, speed through streets, weaving cars, skillfully making our path. And if it's easy, just cruising the country road, you can simply drive like that. It's truly quite cool, you know, like say chopper style, really. And that basically gives the motorcycle two very different styles it indeed has. And I think that's super cool. It's truly super awesome. If I now imagine that I had someone sitting behind me, I can still, as you see my position from the camera there, I can just still manage to sit at the front. So even if someone was sitting behind me now, like JLo, she does have a bit of a bigger booty, thank God. Look, I can also dodge manhole covers here, so I remain agile nonetheless. Here comes a rapidly flying manhole cover. Please watch out, bam, bam. It's truly awesome, despite me sitting really, really far up front, which of course takes away some of your room to interact with the handlebars. The best position, I think, is this one, because I have the perfect symbiosis of not too close to the steering wheel, but also not too far. Because the more you fully stretch your arms out, the less you can readily react on the motorcycle in the very end. So that's like, for me, 
the best position. By the way, we're now in the smallest, lowest mode flow. So having a 520D in front, which is my camera car you see ahead of us, it just doesn't stand a chance in acceleration at all. Rear, no ABS, but front, ABS. Rear is essentially for fun, just as uh, BMW famously put it. The suspension, totally awesome. And the agility this motorcycle demonstrates is just freaking amazing. So this is actually quite a lot of fun. I do see some guys riding ahead. I'll show you that right now. Ahead of us, riding the same motorcycles, those are the tour guides, and right at the front. There's someone with a physique out there, mirroring mine. Thinking this, it's possible to feel like a small, misplaced monkey atop a cold stone, yet the motorcycle's design counteracts, making that sensation negligible. So you don't have that monkey on a stone feeling because there's much body at the motorcycle's back and it's elongated. Yes. It's just really freaking awesome. So it is indeed quite rather loud for an older model BMW, I think. But again, I have no solid basis for comparison. The EV motor, it's quieter, yet lacks power. Fair enough, that must be said as well. Yes, obviously you notice the difference between the BMW and the EV motor, between the 3900 and the 8500 Euro motorcycle. That's twice as expensive in the end, or even more than twice if you really wish. But, you most surely must have certainly already noticed, it's exceptionally built in Germany. So the quality standard here is actually really, you can tell. And this speeding away is absolutely awesome. Here you see the guys right in front of us driving. Yeah, from behind just a bit. How they appear on their motorcycles. The one in front is pretty much my size in terms of height and build. Sure, the bike's actually quite low and you really indeed do notice that too. Yeah, they're ahead. Look at them go. You see the weight difference between riders, how they pull from me just lighter than I am. So even at 11 kilowatt, there's a difference whether you're 85 kilos or, well, 110 kilos. But I really need to be completely honest with you that my weight, it doesn't show here at all. So I don't feel it at all. Above all, the acceleration is brutal. Sure, I'd certainly notice if I suddenly found myself at 70, but it doesn't affect me to the point where I'd say, yes, wow, you can really feel it's dragging. Not at all. But I must also say, at this price, what wouldn't be an option for me at all would be the 45 kmh variant. Because with just one battery and four kilowatts, you see it's quite a drag actually moving this weight, especially since a battery only weighs about 13 kilos or even less. And so you still have 119 kilos instead of 132 with two batteries. So there's no significant difference in weight, yet the power is essentially just a third. You'll notice that. That's why I'm not testing it, because I believe nobody would buy a 45 kilometer scooter for that much money, in my eyes. I can hardly imagine it. Ooh. Even with bumps, when you do break into the bumps, it feels so very super solid. It's truly such a really damn awesome, very fun ride, man. It is just really, really super cool. Even those much longer ground swells, ultra fun truly does, and also that rapid acceleration from zero to gone when squeezing into a gap. Check this out. Observe how very easily I simply just hit 50. Wicked. So, this is really cool, and I haven't even driven it at top speed yet. So, it's really fun, and I also enjoy having this menu here, as I mentioned. That I can see here, for instance, we're at an average speed of 66 kilometers h, now at 87% battery. 60 kilometers range, and here the range display doesn't quite exactly match, I believe, with what ultimately ends up being the precise result at the very end of the day. But that's just how it is, since the motorcycle, of course, doesn't know my weight and doesn't know how to calculate with it. Now I've switched to this display. Now you see here the connectivity hub, the rides, how you've driven. Got seven rides, he says. You can click through here. When you're at the traffic light, just don't, as I said, fiddle around. I find that truly, really quite awesome. And I'm such a huge fan of topography displays. 
Here you see the map, where we are. So the navigation map, so you can navigate yourself, that's really very, very awesome. So my shock infatuation is now slowly turning into deeper love. And it's super, quite thrilling to ride indeed. Awesome. Get the EV moto. Because it'll set you back just 3,900 euros. With these bikes, you can also get the THG quota, by the way. And this isn't a paid advertisement, but rather a shout out to my really great friend, Alex Brangula at Carbonify, who according to reviews, is one of the very best, if not actually the best carbon offset providers. And there, you can also get the carbon offset for motorcycles. And that's quite significant. I mean, like 150, 200, 300 euros, whatever it is right now, I'm not sure. Because someone just got up, I wanna check that out too. Because what's it actually like when you take a moment to relax? I mean, when you get up to stretch your legs a bit, You'll notice that the leg support footrest position isn't exactly for that. Well, yes, here it is, kind of. But on the front footrests, it really works well. And you can still steer, remain very agile. It is fun indeed. The rear one, just when you speed up a little bit, it pulls again over 60 degrees. ultimately now the perfect mix in the ride like how you normally drive you drive through city then you speed up a bit sometimes you hit 70 sometimes 50 and so on so that is essentially precisely how you end up driving this thing you know right control it right here with your own feet or there directly right in front of you in a very distinct choppy style just like the renegade Let's speed things up now. Feet back a bit. That's awesome. I was surely doing it on the fly. That's really not so fast. Man. Oh, and my God, the brakes are really good. Kiss my ass. Seriously, I mean, that is truly ultra solid. BMW's made motorcycles not just since yesterday. Clear. So for me, folks, truly nothing is more ideally perfect for the city. Just this right here is it. Compact and fast and also reasonable. So the crux of the matter simply is, this bike is reasonable. Reasonable for everyone, even if you haven't been operating a motorcycle for quite long, for instance. It's not like it totally overwhelms you. The power is truly brutal, yet not so brutal you'd say, wow, this consistently slips out from under you, that thing, really. It's so awesome. But here you immediately noticed, the moment I got over the bump and it didn't have 100% grip, it took the power away from the rear wheel, right? It's super thrilling, really, so it's quite smooth. You can also, in this sport mode, which in this case isn't called sport mode, but flash, you can also really nicely, smoothly throttle. Always a deeper pit. He usually has no trouble. You can also throttle in such a way that you don't, even on wet cobblestones. It doesn't throw you down but you simply, you can certainly throttle nicely despite that. So it genuinely is a well-rounded affair. I really like it a hell of a lot, I must say. So, yeah, Monchichi. Seems like we've got a new occupant in the garage. Well, what can I say, folks? The contract is here, you could say. So this thing has endless power, really. I see it, I even lift the front, it's pretty awesome. So. It's a fun machine through and through. What we'll look at now for the conclusion is what it actually consumed. Look at the display right here. So, we've got a range of 52 kilometers left. We've driven exactly 10 kilometers. Initially, it showed right to me, I think 78 or possibly something, and we were at 98%. But, just how much battery did we lose? So, nearly 18% of the battery drained in just 10 kilometers. So, yeah, I'd say roughly about 20%. You can calculate that for 12 kilometers. If you calculate 100%, it's five times 12. 60 kilometers. Do 60 kilometers with this profile, then you're out of juice. Of course, the fans of combustion engines will wail, logically saying, hey, my combustion engine, motorcycle, this and that. It's incomparable. Cleaner too. Think of neighbors when heading out early in the morning, when I too leave early for an appointment, 
whatever it may be. Or for that matter, to the airport you could, theoretically, weather you then. Start something like that, or if you just glide out smoothly, that's quite a difference. City noise matters too. You know, I'm really a diehard fan of combustion engines. I own an Alpine A110S indeed. I got it for the sound indeed for the shifting. So when you slam the dual clutch gearbox with the paddle shifters, I'm not an eco nut who says no sound, but it's a noise nuisance in urban areas with those open motorcycles I often hear in Los Angeles where regulations differ. It really disturbs a bit, even though it sounds great. And then there's something awesome like that takes off like crazy purely on the data. Sure, if you're lighter, you can doubtless consume less, obviously, because accelerating uses more energy when heavy, like if you're light, for me, for the city tip top, 10 kilometers is usually the commute distance you often take. Now, another 10 kilometers back, so to speak, then we would certainly still have 60% battery life. What more do you need? It's not a touring motorcycle, but a city runabout, making it very, very awesome. As I said, if you lack dough for this one, which I understand because it needs investment, you can get decent used cars for money. Maybe not decent used electric cars, but reasonably decent used cars. I really get it. It's quite an investment. If not that, I do recommend IY Moto for those on a small budget. I think BMW, no issue. Whoever gets EV Moto can't buy that. And whoever buys it wouldn't buy the EV Moto because here you have more speed, more battery, more range, and of course, the solidity of a BMW. I'll link everything right in the description box, including the ION for home charging, save 10 cents per kilowatt. 400 euros yearly isn't small, depending on drive, of course. In winter, it's not used, so the 400 euros are more about the car. Still, potential to save more. Subscribe, it makes us happy. Watch all videos from this presentation, including BMW iX2, Innovative Electric Countryman. Buy with a Y. Oh yes, indeed, and I'm in the natural flow of my work. Francesco isn't here today, so a big thanks to Constantine. I'm unsure if I should call him Consti. Called my good buddy Constantine, Consti in school. He gave a thumbs up, you know. Thanks, Consti, for superb video work. Feel free to drop in the comments how you found it. Yes, and many thanks for all of the support right here.